Hi, I'm Osiri Wisdom, the lead pastor of the Wisdom Place Church. Welcome again to this amazing MC series. Don't forget we have been discussing about the Love Field Church. The Love Field Church. Uh, this is part three. In part one, we essentially talked about, you know, the core things you need to understand about love. There were five of them. You know, God is love. Love is the way we know ourselves as disciples. Um, love is the way that will take a decision to love people beyond just our feelings. You know, a few other things about love. The last one we talked about, you know, love killers, things that kill love. About things like ignorance, think like favoritism, all of those stuff. Today we are discussing, okay, number three is about how to love the brethren. Uh, remember that part of our aim is to ensure that the love is that the church is filled with love. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of sharing your word again with your sons and daughters. Thank you for the privilege of raising disciples. Today, as we discuss, open the eyes of understanding and may we, Lord, be empowered to become more. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Okay, so loving the brethren. In Acts chapter 2 and verses uh, 41 to 47 that we read when we were talking about the love field church, we read about how they sold their property, how they did this, how they did that. You know, they were just there to help people to become more uh, loving and receive love as well. People sow the property and make sure that other people's needs are met. That was so significant, so powerful that you can't forget that in a hurry. So it's very key, it's very, very, very key, very important that you as an individual, you are able to master the whole of that and then be able to push forward. So. Today, I'm going to read the book of Matthew chapter 25, actually from verses 31 to 46. It's a long reading, but hey, I will skip some places. I'm reading, you know, this scripture. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels, and then they, just, and they shall sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall gather all nations, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat and he shall set the sheep on the right hand and but put the goat on the left hand all right ah, i'm sure in your mind you are wondering will i be a goat or a sheep let's go ahead he said then shall the king say unto them uh, that is on the right come Come ye, ye blessed of the Father, and here the kingdom of the Lord prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I have, I was hungry, and you gave me food. All right? You gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, you looked out for me and took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came there to see me and help me out. Then the righteous should say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and all of this? And then he made a comment in verse 39. He said, when, when you have done this to any of them, then you have done that to me then he looked around and said to the other people you know that is on the left hand the good he said the same thing when i was sick when i was in prison he did not do anything and then in verse 45 the people asked him 44 so when did we see you lord we have not seen i don't even know what, how tall or fat you are slim lord we have not see you don't blame us and then the bible says jesus also said to them in verse 45 he said then he shall answer and say very very i say unto you in as much as you did not do this to the one or the least of this he did not do it to me anything that you have done for you have done for me in answer in verse 46 this shall and this shall go into the everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life wow wow how to love the brethren now we're talking about you know showing love to the church members of the church how do you show love to people in your unit how do you show love to people in your mc how do you show love to people in your affinity group how do you show love to people you are serving together with that's what it's about how do you come to the wisdom place church you know to contribute in the love tank of the entire church and at the same time collect don't just be the type of person 
that collect. You're just collecting love. Everybody's calling you. Everybody's visiting you. And you are not in any position to give back. So today, I'm talking about how do we do the giving and the receiving of love in a church. The giving and the receiving of love in a church. Don't forget that the whole of this MC is to raise disciples for Christ. And so in this discipleship template, it's going to help us to become the best we could possibly be. It's going to help us to achieve more. It's going to help us to conquer. It's going to help us to, you know, uh, make sure that the church is filled with the love of God. That the church is filled with the love of God. Okay, so let me go. Based on what we read in the book, Acts chapter 2, and this scripture, how, uh, what are the practical things you can do to show love among the brethren. Number one is a deep connection through interaction. You see, as we're an MC, we make it so that the teaching is just short. You know, but we create time for you to interact. That's why we say you should break into smaller groups of four and five to create hurdles. And those hurdles will help you, you know, to be in that space where you can completely conquer, you know, things like this. This is very, very important. Very, very important. You have to be in that mood to interact, deepen connection with people. All right. This is number one thing, because if you want to show love to somebody, you have to know the person. You have to know what is the person's problem or the challenges the person has. Okay, so I used to say it this way: to love Osiri, you have to first of all know Osiri. If you don't know me, how you don't know how you're going to love me? But to know somebody, you have to interact with that person. It's through interaction you relate and then understand who the person is. So the first thing to deepen, you know, in Acts chapter two, verse forty-two says, they were continually faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostle and the fellowship to eating meals together and to prayers. And that's what we do at missional communities. We do five things at the missional communities. We pray, we study the world together, we share our life, good, bad, and the ugly. You know, we, we party and then we go. That's what we do. The same thing, you do that by interaction. Don't be the type of person that church closes, you carry your bag and go. Don't be the type of person that avoid missional community or you say, I'll come once in a month. No, you are interacting with other people. And this is very key. Number two, First is interaction, church closes. Look for someone you don't you never met before. Someone you have never met before. Look for that person and meet that person. Number two, visitation. Sometimes you have to go out and visit people in a practical sense. Look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 46. He said, and they worship together at the temple each day and met in homes and they shared their meals together with joy and great generosity all right if you go down all right bible talks about a time came Paul and told you know uh his team members come let's go back to the churches where we preach before and visit people have you visited any member of your mc beyond where you just come to mc to meet ask your neighbor do you know my house do you know my house ask the person what did the person say so some people don't want people to visit them no no not to family members like us you can't be resisting, refusing church members from knowing your house. No, we are family. We want to know you down to that point. Maybe if you don't want us to come to your home, is it office, is it where? So whatever it is, we must visit people that we have not seen in church for a while. We need to stay part of our comfort zones and go look for the people and just honor them. We have to go just honor them. We have to go and visit people. What happens when you visit somebody is quite different from when you did not visit that person. It's differently, I mean, completely different. When you visit somebody, it's completely different. So it's key for you to know. Number one, how do you make sure that you love the brethren? Love the brethren by connecting with them through interaction. Number two, by visitation, okay? By visitation, you visit the brethren visit the brethren as well and that can help you number three is to care for the brethren you know in the book of um, uh, philippians you know chapter two uh paul was writing to them he said there's no one that's so like-minded that cares for your state the same way the same way this guy cares for you people all right um it's key that your name your they may not call your name the titles you know, a, a, a deities or Ananas and Sapphira or 
present Aquila. You know, Paul called different names. He said, but this guy is completely sold out to caring for the brethren. You have to care. And that's what Jesus did in John chapter, you know, John chapter 21, when Jesus was asking Peter, love it more than this. He said, take care, feed my sheep, feed my goat, feed my lamb. He was saying, care for my people. God wants us to care for each other. Let me tell you, a pastor like me now, when a church grows past 100, a pastor alone cannot care for everyone in the church. This care um, uh, missionary committee now that metamorphosized from care cycle is a way that we care for ourselves. So you have something you are doing, then you have people in church that can help you do it. You have people in church that can be there for you to do it. You have people in church that can be a part of that uh, you know uh, assignment if you do not understand that it's going to be a big challenge for you so you must go and grow in that understanding and be everything you could possibly be this is something powerful this is something exemplary for you to understand that you have to stay in that place where you care for people you can't be in church and you don't care for other people no no you have to care care all right Number four, what do you do? How do you love the brethren? You love the brethren by meeting practical needs. Some practical needs. Sometimes some people don't have clothes to wear or don't have many clothes to wear. And then you say, oh, I have seven. Can I spare one and give to somebody? Okay. Sometimes people don't have quality food to eat. It's okay. I can provide the food that can give this person to eat. But by all means, you are stepping into that zone where you are participating in the lives of that person becoming better. You're just doing your best to help that person become better. This is key. This is important. This is how to rise. This is how to win in everything that we are doing. You cannot afford not to win, you know, by, you know, just... Showing love to other people. Be practical in your love expression. Express your love to other people. Let them feel that love. Practical needs be met and shared in order to meet people's need. In verse 45 of Acts 2. So a love-filled church to love the brethren, you meet practical needs. Let me say the last one for today. And I hope you are getting really blessed by this, my sharing. And I will also allow you people to have your conversation. You break into groups and you're asking yourself question. What is God telling me? Is there any way I need to improve? Is there anything I need to change? And then when you do that, you're going to see yourself go into a whole new dimension. Now look at this. Number five is embrace one another. Embrace one another. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verses, you know, one and two, it says, keep on loving one another. All right, keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hostility to strangers. For by so doing, people have shown hostility to angels unknowingly. There's another scripture I want to read for you. It's the book of Romans chapter 16. I'm reading the message translation. Romans chapter 16 from verse 1. The message translation tells you about this. This is so powerful super super powerful I, I i can tell you i'm 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 enriched myself by just listening to this word that god has given to us all right so i'm reading the book of uh romans chapter 16 verses 1 and 2 about embracing other people and showing hospitality you have to embrace other people and show hospitality look at what he says here he said be sure to welcome our friend phoebe in the way of the master with all the generous hospitality we christians are famous for i want to be known as a famous generous person i hope that's your desire to be known as a generous person you know when the more generous you are the more god even pours into your life so i i want to be more of a generous person i want to show generosity to people you want to show that you know Bible says that we are famous. We want the Wisdom Place Church to be famous for generosity. We want people to hear, ah, this is what this brother did for that brother. All right. That is what we want to be known for. We want to have hardly endorse, you know, Bible says, I hardly endorse both her and her work. This is Paul talking. Endorse her as an individual and her business, whatever she does. That's why he says she is he represents the church, okay, in Cesar. He says, help her out, whatever she asks. She deserves anything you can do for her. She has helped many a person, including me. This is Paul writing, giving a testimony for this young girl. And this is about embracing ourselves and helping ourselves with a huge 
form of hospitality. I want to say thank you for listening to me. And I'm going to end here today. But I want you to go through. I've mentioned five things, five simple things on how you can, you know, show hospitality to one that in church you believe i say make sure you build connection through interaction i said make sure you visit people's home yes somebody visit the home not just in church take this thing beyond just church all right but let the visitation be safe visitation not the visitation that will put you in trouble not the visitation that you're visiting a sister alone or a sister visiting a brother alone by 10 midnight not that type of visitation i mean correct visitation you go two by two uh, you know you you go as a team and then go there and visit somebody those kind of visitation that's what i mean okay you visit you care for the people care sometimes care it might not be about money this is about listening to the person and offering the person an information that can help that person become better that's what it's about okay when you understand that you can begin to win then you talk about practical needs of people meeting practical needs of people and finally i say you have to embrace one another and then show hospitality i want to stop here and i want you to note the things that you learned that stood out for you and at the same time i want you to go into your breakout sections into your hurdles and discuss maybe there are many other ways I don't limit it to five. Many other ways that your own MC can show love among yourself and then spread it. Let your MC be the, the MC that has so much love. So much love. Let your MC. Your MC may not be called love MC, but let love fill every MC. A church cannot do well without the love of God flowing in that church. I want to let you know I cherish you and I value you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. In Jesus' mighty name, your best is yet to come. I love you all. Don't forget that church begins on Monday. And every Tuesday, we meet our missional communities. Every Saturday, we go out to witness to other people. I hope you are joining your MC to go every Saturday. Every Saturday. It's up in out, up towards God. We do that on Sunday. We pray every day on through the Trunk Connect platform. And then we meet on Thursday. On, from, on Saturday, Tuesday, we meet physically, rather. Thursday, we meet again. And then Saturday, we go out. Your MC. Last Sunday, I saw one MC man. He was coming with four people. Four young men. He said, sir, this book came from my MC. I think it's Beautiful Gate. Let's celebrate Beautiful Gate MC. Wow, that was powerful. I was at the gate welcoming people in church. I said, Pastor, these four people are new members. They are new people. They came from my Beautiful Gate MC. Beautiful Gate MC, we are proud of you. And every other MC, I may not have called your name today, but keep doing the good work and God will honor you. I cherish you and I value you. Have a fruitful interaction section. I want to pray that God's hands will be upon you. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that the glory of God will show forth. Now that people are saying there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. I pray that God opens strange doors for you. May God make things work for you. The lady you want to marry, as you talk to her, she will agree. In the name of Jesus, the parents will agree. Your business opportunity will explode. Opportunities from left, right, and center beyond your widest imagination coming your way. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray pray your health will be strong. I pray your spiritual life will be stronger. In Caraventure, you are struggling with anything. May God's grace be made available for you to overcome them in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. We give you all of the praise. In Jesus' gracious name, we pray. In case you're not giving your life to Christ, in your MCs, they're going to make an altar call and I want to respond to Jesus because that's the beginning of embracing love. I cherish and I value you. Stay blessed.